Thank you. And, and uh, so um, in, in the second lecture, um, I will talk about um, uh, web intentions of the hack edge bus. And uh, more explicitly, so let, let me uh, write down the things actually, actually I want to talk about. This is the code center. And this is just a web, web intentions. And uh, so the, the message that I, I want to uh, pass to you in the first lecture is that um, I think that uh, the intersection of the Fuhua cells with the country class is important and worth to study. And in the second talk, and the information I want to pass to you is just the code center. Uh, of the hack algebra is also important and worth to study. And um, okay, as I said in the beginning, that actually we have this motive, and uh, I I do want to make sure that it actually also appears in the second talk. This actually justify the motive literally. And uh, okay, so I say that we think about the um, and. I found wire groups together with the land that play has already played an important role in the studies of the PID group. And now we're going to say how the Afan wire group together with the lens function play an important role in the studies of the hack algebra. And okay, so the motivation for the second talk we comes with the web intentions of the find groups. And uh, well, in web intention 101, we know that the numbers of the irreducible web intentions over C is the same as the numbers of the country C classes. And another way to formulate this um, is that for the left hand side, what are the irreducible web intentions? Instead of thinking about the irreducibles, you can think about all the fine dimensional web intentions, and you take the Gosnick group. So this is generated by RG. This Gosnick group has a basis just given by the irreducibles. So the left hand side is, in fact, just the ranks of the R of G. And what, what about the right hand side? So now we actually think about the group algebra, C of G, and then we take this C of G quoting out by the commutator, and we just call this the co-center. So here you can say if you have the two elements, G and G prime, in the, if that's in the same conjugacy class of this group G, then the difference lies in the commutator. So in other words, they have the same image in the code center. So this code center, in fact, has a standard basis given by the conjugacy classes. And uh, so what we have is that the numbers of conjugacy classes just equal to the dimension of this code center. And uh, so we have the trace map, which actually relates these two. A trace map. So we start from the code center, just on any element, and we go to the linear functions on the Gordon group, which means that to each virtual web intention V, we want to associate a number, and this number just given by the trace. And well, so this is just uh, the basic web intention theory course. And uh, for example, you may find this in. Uh, in in the book by um, Ettingoff for the undergraduate, which I really like that one. And okay, and now the question is that, okay, this is for the final group. What happens for the PID group? And also this is over complex numbers. What about the model group intention? And well, um, I have to say that this is a really, really hard question and uh, 
And so let's make the life easier on, on the early Saturday morning by modifying this question. Um, so we, here we do not consider arbitrary weapon tensions of a PID group. Instead, let's just think about the weapon tensions of a PID group, which is generated by the vectors fixed by a given your hurry. And uh, well, so um, those weapon tensions can be understood using the heck algebra. In fact, we um, think about the, the group, the PID group quotient by the Iwahari, and we look at this endomorphism. So this actually gives the so-called the Iwahari heck algebra. And uh, well, we have this is a Bauer Kassman equivalence of the category, and appears in the 1976. That if you start with a um, weapon tensions of a PID group, and let's look at its uh, I fixed uh, vectors. This one gives the equivalence of the categories of the smooth complex weapon tension of a PID group with the categories of the weapon tensions of the Iwahari Heck algebra. So, this is actually what happens over the complex numbers. And uh, for the model weapon tension, if the characteristic is not equal to the defining characteristic, then, then there's a, a, so there's a result of the Wiener in the 1998, where she calls the simple Borel theorem, that this map still gives the bijection between the irreducible. Uh, P, so the, the, the PID. And so here we consider about weapon tension of G over an algebraic closed field K of the, the K is characteristic L, different from P. We can think about the model. That does not matter. We have this, um, uh, what they call the uh, closed field theory. Any question? Okay, so um, the heck algebra. And um, what is the heck algebra? Let's say if we start with a coxed group, or in general, a quasi coxed group. For example, this including the case that you are having one group. And we have a set of the uh, generators, which are just a simple reflection. And the heck algebra is a deformation of the group algebra with some parameter. So here we have this is a um, parameter function. We give a, we give a number for each simple reflection. The only requirement is that if the two simple reflections are conjugate, then we give the same number. And the definition of the algebra is that this, this is an algebra generated by the element in the, in the group. Subject to the relation, first is that the TW, TW prime equals to TWW prime. And well, so this actually looks like the group multiplication, but this holds only when the length i. So you see here the length, in fact, also play a role in the heck algebra. And the second one, just if you consider about the simple reflection, then we have this relation, the ts plus one times the ts minus q equal to zero. So here you see that if you actually put the q to be one, then the second relation becomes the ts square equal to one. And this just means that, uh, that it is a reflection. So we come back to the group algebra if we put the, all the QS to be one. So in general, this is just the deformations of the group algebra. And well, as we have discussed, that if the W is the finest cox of the group, then we actually have the, the co-center with presentation dualities for, for this group algebra or the heck algebra at the parameter equal to one. And uh, well, so 
So the Iwahari hack algebra that we actually care about, this is an alpha hack algebra with certain parameters. Okay, and um, since we actually talk about the representations of the um, alpha hack algebra, and uh, so this um, seminal work of the Kastan and Lustig in the 1987, it says that if you start with a reductive group with a simply connected derived group, and uh, we have this uh, alpha hack algebra associated to the parameters are not root of unity, then the simple modules are in the bijection with a triple, so this is a semi-simple, unipotent, and the condition is S U S inverse equal to U to the Q, and uh, so this is a, um, this is a local system of a Springer type, and this is just uh, the natural, it gives the classification. And the further development, and uh, we also Lustig in the 89 introduced the graded alpha hack algebra. So the alpha hack algebra in some sense looks like the group, and the graded alpha hack algebra in some sense looks like, like the Lie algebra. And uh, well, uh, in many ways, the, the the algebra is easier to study than the group, and so is the graded alpha hack algebra than the alpha hack algebra. And uh, so this one also plays an important role to give the construction, to give the construction of the uh, representations for the uh, alpha hack algebra. And to say, um, in fact, in this uh, uh, work of the Kassan Lustig, actually the, the two major restrictions, first is that have this additional um, assumption, and this one is actually uh, removed by the reader in the 2002. And the second is that there is some, um, um, some restrictions on the parameters. So here this is not a root of unity, but in fact she actually in the 2007 shows that in fact this parameterization remains valid if this Q is a root of a unit, but it is a nice one, which means that it's not the root of the Pankalai polynomial. And, and so all this is just for the equal parameters. And uh, there are some recent development for the unequal parameters. So the Cato in the 2009, it gave the classification of the unequal parameters for the, simple, for the symplectic group. So there's this unequal parameters, but still this actually is just uh, not the root of unity. And then Opt and Salivir in the 2010, and they also studied about the um, alpha hack algebra with unequal, with unequal but positive parameters. Okay, and uh, so this is a CDM, so I would like to talk about some current development. And uh, okay, so we like to say, um, what can we say about the co-center and the weapon tensions for the alpha hack And uh, okay. As you have seen in the definitions of the hack algebra, that uh, we do say that the length function actually plays an important role in the definition. And uh, well, so this is the reason that we actually want to um, refer to this the minimal length element. But let's first uh, stress the question. Let's say if we start with the conjugacy class and we pick up the two elements in this conjugacy class, then we know that in the group algebra, the image of this element in the cosenter of the group algebra coincides. But if you look at the hack algebra, which is the deformation of the group algebra, then we look at the image of these two elements because of this complicated uh, deformation that in general the, the image actually are different. And this actually indeed caused some trouble. And in fact, this is a motivation for the Gekka and the Pfeiffer in the 1993 paper to discover the the properties on the minimal length element in order to fix this problem. And uh, so let's just uh, uh, recall the, the result which we actually mentioned in the first talk. 
that if you have the finite coxed group or that you have a wild group and we pick up a conjugate class, then starting from any element, we have a sequence of a simple reflections and we shall create the weakly decrease the length and eventually goes down to a minimum one. And any two um, minimal length elements are strongly conjugate. So the upshot of this is that for finite or affine hack algebras with the non-zero parameters, first is that now we actually fix this problem. If you pick up a minimal length representative, then the image is independent of the choice. of such minimal length representative. So the image actually does depend on the choice if you pick up arbitrary elements in the conjugate class, but if you just uh, restrict to the minimum one, then the choice does not really matter. And we denote the image by the, uh, uh, by, by P of O. And second, because of the any element we can eventually go down to a minimum one, then they actually span the, the whole quotient. Um, as we said, for the group algebra, we know that they form a basis. And we would like to know if they form a basis for the heck algebra as well. And well, so this is actually not so easy to establish. But let's first look at what happens for the fine hair catch case. So for the fine hair catch case, um, a good thing is that we have the his deformation theorem, which says that for the generic parameters, the hair catch is isomorphic to the group catch. And which means that, okay, so this is isomorphic to group catch, then according to the thing we just have discussed about the quotient of representation duality for the group algebra, we know that for the generic parameter, this one is an isomorphic. And also, so the, the, the dimension of this is equal to the numbers of the irreducibles of the W and also equal to the numbers of the conjugate classes of W. So in other words, the dimension of the co-center is equal to the number of the conjugate classes. We have already seen that those, those POs actually form a spanning set. Then from the basic linear algebra argument, we know they form a basis. And then because this is true for generic parameters, then we know this is true for any non-zero parameters. So we have this as a standard basis. Okay, so here a simple but key observation is that we are able to, so this is the finite, and we are able to count the numbers. Well, what happens for the affine hair algebra? Well, it is infinite. And to make the things worse, the dimension of the co-center is countably infinite, and the rank of the quotient group is uncountably infinite. Uh, well, what should we do with this? And a very useful technique in the representation theory is the induction. Once we know what happens for the representations of a smaller group or the smaller algebra, then we can use the induction to get many representations for the larger one. And so here what we want to do is that we want to focus on the so-called the parabolic subalgebras. And, uh, and so for each subset of the simple, of the final simple root, we have this associated uh, parabolic subalgebra. So um, this one you can think about, if you want to think about this in terms of a PID group, then this one is just the um, Iwahari hair algebra of the corresponding parabolic subgroup. And it consists of two parts, the semi-simple part and the center. 
So here, when we actually talk about the weapon tensions, we actually do have the two parts. One part actually coming from the semi-simple part of this uh, par parabolic subalgebra, and the other part comes from the central character. So the connect, the connect component of the center is a torus. So the central character is also is also a torus. So this this form a continuous continuous family. And uh, so let's say if we have these T varies, then we have this the continuous families of the parabolically induced model. Okay, and uh, okay, this is a, by definition, we say a linear function on the Gaussian group is good if you evaluate it on this continuous family of the parabolically induced module, then it is a regular function on the central character. And uh, well, the result of the Bernstein, the Ling, and the Kastan in the 1986 says that if you start with the hair uh, algebra of a PID group, then the image just consists of those good forms. And this is um, what we call the trace pattern winner theorem. And the map is injective, so this is the density theorem. I would say this actually for the um, complex value functions and uh, for the smooth complex weapon tensions. Well, uh, however, we, we, um, we want to find a way um, to um, also shed some, at least shed some light for the modern weapon tensions. And um, so in order to do this, we first would like to, bless you, we first would like to give an explicit basis of the code center. And second, we would like to say how such information can be used to study the ordinary and modular weapon tensions of the Asan Hecker algebra. Well, um, for the first one, the key idea is that we want to construct the filtration on both the cosenters and the weapon tensions so that the corresponding sub quotient matches. And, um, well, and uh, so there's a important, the important notation here called the elliptic quotient um, is that if you think about all the weapon tensions, but we're actually quoting out and the, the spam of all the properly induced modules. And so this is the so called the elliptic quotient, and which is actually imp very important and has many um, applications as well. However, this is not good enough for our purpose. The problem is that if you try to write down the expected dual on this co-center side, and then this is very complicated, and um, so uh, even in the case of the um, Bernstein, the Ling, and the Kastan, when the parameters is, is, is a part of, of P, then this, this, this is actually very highly non-trivial to, to say um, what the, the, the other side is and uh, whether or not they actually due to each other. And well, what we're going to do is that we're going to do something different. And in fact, this actually is um, motivated from the arithmetic geometry. So uh, we have ac actually seen this map in the first talk. This BG is the set of the sigma conjugate classes of G, and this is just the set of all the conjugate classes. And inside this the BG, we have the very important subset, which just consists of the basic sigma conjugate classes. And so here we like to say, okay, let's just compute this diagram. And so we just introduce the basic uh, conjugate classes 
of the Iwa Hagi of the Afan wire group. So here, by definition, what this basically means, this is just a set of country classes with a central Euclidean point. Well, another, another way to say is that we have the map from the, the, from the set of country classes to the set of special country classes to the GIT quotient, and then this one, the basic one, is just a single fiber. And well, um, so in um, arithmetic geometry, the basic sigma country class is very important. And uh, so when we look at this diagram, we, we would like to expect that this one, the basic country classes of the alpha wire groups also carries important information and uh, will be enough for our purpose to understand about the co-centers of the affine hexagon. And so this actually leads to, and uh, this leads to the uh, introductions of the widget co-center. So by definition, a widget co-center is just the subspace of the whole co-center, which is spanned by the TO, but only for those basic country classes. And well, now the question is that, what happens on the dual side? We might want to make sure that when we actually have this side, that we have this dual side, and the dual side is also something nice and uh, understandable. Okay, so this is the dual side. So you see that the dual side is just, again, we have this, so th this is a sub, so the co-center side is a sub, and the, the dual side should be the quotient. And this quotient is just this, this um, the whole quotient group, quotient out by the properly, going about by the induced modules. But here, not, not all the induced modules, but actually the different, of the induced model. And it's actually good to compare it with this elliptic quotient. So the elliptic quotient, we're actually quoting out all the properly induced modules. But here, we actually only quoting out the, the, the difference. So in some sense, we somehow enlarge from the elliptic quotient to this is a widget quotient. And uh, where does this name widget come from? So you can see that if you put this, this TO, well, this is, comes from the basic, basic Newton point. And you actually evaluate the trace on the induced module. Then this trace is independent of the choice of the character. And this, this is this why we actually call this the widget. And this is also the reason that these two should be dual to each other. And this is a joint work with uh, Chip Taro in the 2000, uh, well, in this year. And is that if you start, if you start with the trace map from the co-center to, to a linear function on the weapon tension, this one actually induced a map on the widget part of the co-center together with the widget quotient of the weapon tension. And for the generic non-zero complex parameters, this one is a perfect pairing. And for the arbitrary non-zero parameters, this map is subjective. But it is not injective in general. And well, we have some consequences. And first, now we have the trace partner winner theorem for arbitrary non-zero uh, complex parameters. We know that the, the image is always the good form. And we have the density theorem for all the generic parameters. This map is injective. And we have the basis theorem. Now it says that this set, now this set, um, 
the TO will all run over all the conjugate classes form a basis of the cocenter. So this, this actually, this, this is true for any non-zero parameters or for the generic Heck algebra. And moreover, as we said, we have this the barrier Kassman correspondence between the irreducible complex weapon tensions of the PID group uh, with the non-zero Iwahari fixed point and the weapon tensions of the uh, Iwahari Heck algebra. And then I think this is actually asked by about where, whether or not this correspondence preserves the unitarity. And this is actually um, uh, first proved by uh, Barbash and Moy under several restrictions on the group. And later on, they actually they removed some restrictions. Um, uh, but actually, finally, um, using this basic theorem, we are able to, to get, get, a, um, get a, um, a relatively simpler proof. Okay, so far you see everywhere we just talk about non-zero, non-zero. What happens to the zero, alpha and zero heck algebra? And uh, when we say the alpha and zero heck algebra, this means that we just want to put all the parameters to be zero. Well, first, why we actually care about those? And uh, well, so first it actually serves as a model for the pro P Iwahari Heck algebra. And uh, so the pro P Iwahari Heck algebra play an important role in the study of the mod P weapon tensions of the PID groups. And second, let's say, so the alpha and zero Heck algebra is a typical example that we do not have the co center weapon tension duality. However, the good news is that the, the co-center representation duality fails in a controllable, in a controllable way. And uh, so this actually, in fact, this actually serves as an evidence, which actually leads to this, what we call this a naive kernel conjecture, which we will we'll, we'll, uh, discuss later. Okay, first. What can we say about the co-center of alpha and zero Heck algebra? And so in fact, it behaves very differently from the alpha Heck algebra with non-zero parameters. So for the non-zero parameters, the basis is parameterized by the conjugacy classes. But here, so the base, the, the basis has a larger index set. So it is actually indexed by what you call the thickest shift classes of the minimal length element. Well, on the other, on, on the other side, we do have some better news for the alpha and zero hair catch than for the um, um, than for the Heck algebra with the non-zero parameters. So in fact, so here, instead of the filtration, we do have a direct sum. So um, as before, we introduce the widget path to be those, um, to be those sigma with the central Newton point. And for, for those with the non-central one, we call this the non-widget path. And now let's look at the co-center weapon tension relation between the, um, between the um, uh, alpha and zero heck algebra. Okay, and uh, well, so far we haven't really construct explicitly any weapon tension yet. Now let me just do so for this the alpha and zero heck algebra. So here, um, if we pick up any subset of the simple reflections um, for this the alpha and wire group, then we just we can associate a character. So how this character acts? 
So the simple reflection acts by minus one if this simple reflection li lies in this subset. Otherwise, it acts by zero. And uh, so this actually gives a one-dimensional weapon tensions of the affine zero haircut. I should say this construction only works if the parameters are zero. <coughs> if the parameters are not zero, then you say that, um, in fact, this actually does not work. Okay, now uh, what can we say about the dual side to the, well, what can we say about the widget quotient? Uh, the widget quotient. So in fact, this is the widget quotient, this is not only a quotient, but in, in, indeed, it is actually a direct sum. So um, this one is actually spanned by those characters associated to K, such that the corresponding wire group of K is a finite wire group. Then the first says that, okay, so this one is indeed matches with the widget co-center because, I mean, this just exactly those. If you compute the trace for the non-widget part, it vanishes. And second, now we have this is an induced map from the widget co-center to this widget quotient. This map is subjective but far from being in injective. However, where does this kernel come from? So this kernel is in fact comes from the image of this. So this one just X, so I should say uh, HK of O, HK of zero is the finite zero hack algebra associated to the parahoric. And for the final one, we know that the co-center with penetration duality fails. But we actually, we even know how exactly it fails. And in, in, in other words, we have the explicit description for this kernel. And for the affine one, so this kernel is, the kernel of this for the affine hack algebra is exactly um, comes from the comes from the kernels for the parahoric for all the parahoric. Um, okay, so um, for the representations of the affine zero hair algebra, or the representations of the pro P Wahabi hair algebra, or the or the mod P representations of a PID group, a very important, but actually, um, I should say, the mysterious one is the super singular. And uh, we still do not know what happens for the super singular representations for the mod P representation. However, for the um, um, affine zero hack algebra or for the pro-P or high hack, hack algebra, now we actually understand what ha happens. So this is actually um, obtained by uh, Vin Ross for both the affine zero and the, the pro-P or Harry. It says that um, our representation is super singular if and only if it's actually spanned by the characters where both conditions are sa satisfied. So both the WK and the WS minus K are finite. So here the condition that, that WK is finite means that not all the TS acts by zero. And this condition says that not all the TS acts by minus one. So in other words, the super singular just means that we uh, that means they are characters, but not the trivial character and not the sign character. And uh, so um, we have a different proofs of this, and also we have another criterion 
for this super singular. So you can say that for, for, the, for the widget, we just say this is just, we take this is a non-widget part, we want the trace to be zero. But here, we have this is a, um, involutions of the alpha and zero hair algebra of the Wiener Rust. And this is super singular, just means that for this non-widget part, and the iota of this non-widget part, we compute the trace, it's actually equal to zero. And, um, okay, so now um, when we come back, when we come to this is a, uh, come back to the alpha and hack algebras with the non-zero parameter. But now we are also consider it over arbitrarily algebraic closed field of any characteristic. And also we want to consider about the um, parameters which are root of unity. And uh, okay, so um, uh, we know that in general, so um, this map from the widget part to, to this widget co-center is subjective, but not injective. And we would like to say, what is the kernel? Well, so um, from the basic theorem that we actually we know at least some part of the kernel. So this is just, uh, we, if we pick up any k, with subject finite, or in other words, we pick up any parahoric subalgebra, but we want to enlarge it uh, according to this. So here, the um, Afan, the Yuhai wire group is in fact the Afan wire group semi dual product with some group of length zero. This is a quasi coxeter group structure. And uh, so we uh, want to enlarge this the parahoric subalgebra using the normalizers of this K. So again, so this one is a finite Heck algebra. And so we just look at the weapon tensions of this finite Heck algebra. So this map may not be injective. And so it actually contains some kernel. And uh, so here we just say the naive kernel is just the sum of all this. And okay, so this is a naive kernel conjecture, which says that this naive kernel is in fact the whole kernel. We actually know that uh, the which part actually is in fact the sum of all those um, HK sharp. And now we actually know the kernels for each part. Then this conjecture says that this in fact just the, 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 just the whole kernel. And uh, so um, finally, um, let me, um, give the two examples. Uh, I should say, um, once we have this, then we are able to compute uh, the weight quotient of the modular open tensions. Um, and so here this actually, um, these are just the conjectural rank of this, the weight quotient for, for the weapon ten, for the modular weapon tensions of the Afan Heck algebra. And so for the SL3, you can say, okay, this side is just uh, the different choice of the parameters. And this side is just, just a different choice of the characters. And you may have already noticed that immediately that in fact here there, there is actually no difference. And it's actually kind of silly to, to, to put these conditions here, but it will actually show up for, for, for the other one. But uh, let, let's first focus on this one. 
you can see here for the general generic case, um, it is the number is five. So the five, this just equals to the numbers of the basic conjugacy classes of the of the alpha and y group. Uh, but when you come to some bad root of unity, then we get some we get some non-trivial kernel, and then this number becomes smaller. The first case that means that there's, 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 there's no kernel, and then the kernel is dimension one, kernel is dimension three. And in the PGO3 case, you can see, again, in the generic situation, we still get this number five. But, but now you see that there's some difference between the characteristic equal to three and the characteristic not equal to three. And also you can say that, um, so here when the parameter changes, this number actually changes, but also the character changes then this number also changes. And also there's a, diff there's a difference between this the SDO3 and the PGO3. For the generic one, the numbers are always five. They match it, but for the other one, they actually don't match. Um, I say, okay, so what we know about this, um, we see this naive kernel, so we, we only know that this actually is already contained in the kernel. So in fact, um, so this number is actually already gives you an upper bound of the widget quotients of the model, of the model weapon tension. And we expect that this is actually in fact the Correct, dimen correct dimensions of this rigid quotient. And uh, okay, so this is all I want to say, and thank you. That's right. That's right. Mm. Okay. So um, yes, we we um, for the uh, well. I, first, I should say that for for the for the for the call center, um, the basis here will always hold. Not 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 only for for the general parameters, but actually for, for the arbitrary parameters. And this is, this in fact, this is actually the reason that we, we can talk about this is a naive kernel conjecture for, for any non-zero parameters. And the second, for the generic parameters, then we have this is a K0 of G, uh, we are mapped to um, the uh, width co-center. And um, so this map is, uh, this map is injective, and this map is always injective, and for the generic parameter, this map is surjective. So in other words, for the generic parameter, this actually, this is a bijection. Um, but the, the thing is that if you, if you want to, so the, the, the K0 is actually infinite dimensional. If you want to relate the K0 with the, with the fine dimensional with tensions and, and K0 whole yes, the K, the K0 is just, Find the general but infinite dimensional. And, and so here, if you want to com compare the, the K0 of edge, so um, if, if, you, if you want to consider the K0, um, so for the general parameter, we know these are isomorphic, and we also know these are isomorphic. But if, if you want, want, want to say, um, starting from this, you want to get some nice representative for the fine dimensionals, uh, that I do not know how to do. Okay. 
And I should say that, in fact, um, if we know how to do this, not, not only for the generic parameters, but for arbitrary parameters, so this is an embedding, and uh, so this is subjective. If you know how, how to do this, then, then probably you, this actually leads to uh, the, the, the proofs of this naive kernel conjecture. 